first of all, uh, gentlemen, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you having me out and, uh, and being here. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor for me, and uh, it's, it's a great way for me to honor uh, my brother, the memory of my brother. Um, I don't know how many of you all may have read an email or heard a little bit of the history, but uh, Cliff, my oldest brother, uh, was president of the House um, and extremely passionate about uh, Delta 6 and, and everything you all do and stand for. Um, so I can tell you that he uh, is would be very proud of, of you and the, the way you have uh, developed and, uh, and represented uh, what uh, he and others before before you um, tried to establish, um, it, it wasn't the house that, that it is now, um, and uh, it's uh, it's really really neat to see that and the, the effort passion that he had um, and the, the things that he was able to do uh, to hear about the I think was it the presidential award I'm not even sure the exact name of it for the house but isn't it the, the house of the year kind of thing that I that I heard about um, I think that's fantastic um, my brother actually won the same award that, uh, that Nate won um, many years ago. I just found out tonight earlier that he was the, the first one prior to prior to you. So um, really neat uh, and, uh, and a cool way for me to uh, sort of connect with that, that memory. Um, the, uh, the other connections that I have, certainly Cliff is the, the, the driving uh, factor here. Uh, my best friend now uh, was my, my brother's best friend. Um, Dan Horsch, he's, uh, he's a Delta SIG as well, uh, lives in Kansas City, and uh, I lived there prior to moving back here to Manhattan, and he and I connected uh, from the relationship he had with my brother, and he's he's really become my, my best friend now. And then uh, Dwayne Saunders, who uh, I'm sure hopefully many of you know that name, um, a fellow brother of yours, uh, who has uh, done extremely well, actually uh, had uh, the, the, the forethought of um, bringing us together, introducing me to some uh, some of you your folks over dinner here a while back. Uh, Dwayne's a Dwayne's a special guy. I think he's actually going to speak to you. He told me here in a couple of weeks, so he's uh, he's excited about that. He's uh, an amazing story. I'll let him tell his own story, but uh, pretty neat to, to see that connection, and I really appreciated it um, uh, for for uh, bringing me back here. Um, a little bit of my history, not just because I love talking about myself, but just so you kind of know who's uh, up here speaking to you. Um, uh, first of all, I grew up here in Manhattan. Um, my my dad here. Uh, we moved here when I was a year old, I believe. Uh, stayed here and went uh, went to um, K State. Played football here in the early '90s when Coach Schneider first got here. So I was kind of involved in sort of the turnaround years, which was uh, uh, an amazing experience. Being from a young guy that grew up here in Manhattan, uh, went to Texas for grad school, then uh, moved around a little bit in uh, the old Big Eight, Big Twelve. Um, Days worked at uh, Missouri for, for a while in athletic administration. Um, Iowa, State, uh, Iowa State for a bit, and then I went and worked for a company called Learfield Sports. I don't know if y'all have heard or know what that is, but managed media or sponsorship rights uh, for athletic departments across the country. And I worked in Missouri for them, and then in Kansas City before moving here about three and a half years ago. Um, I am married to another Manhattan High Indian and uh, K State Wildcat. We actually grew up about a block apart. Uh, we have four kids, uh, three three daughters, 12, 9, and 7, and then we just adopted a boy. He'll turn three. Um, we adopted him a few months back, and he'll turn three here at the end of the month. Um, so uh, back to, to Cliff and uh, and and the house. Um, I don't know. I, I also just read from Dwayne the book that was written on the history of the Delta State House. So he, of course, when he saw that and uh, he kind of figured out the connection between me and him, we, we had already got to know each other through my role in fundraising for the athletic department, uh, but it was really neat to go back and see that and see the, some of the things that, you know, I was six years younger than Cliff, so I didn't realize that he had done all the things that he had done with the house, um, and uh, he would truly really be proud. Um, but uh, he actually passed away. I don't know if you, you heard that part of the story or not, but uh, August 28th of 2004, uh, from cancer. He had uh, uh, cancer, I can't even, never remember the name of it, but it was in the parotid gland here on the, the side of his side of his face, back there underneath his jaw. Um, and he was diagnosed with cancer the first time while he was a Delta State here at K-State. So I was, uh, let me see, about six years younger. I think it was about his summer before his junior, <coughs> senior year. Is that, is that right? Um, so I would have been, I think, summer before my junior year in high school, about. Um, and 
you can imagine 21, 22 year old young man being diagnosed with cancer, um, and it was a type of cancer that was extremely rare. In fact, I think he was one, if not the youngest, one of the youngest to ever have that, that type of cancer. And at that time, um, the only way to really battle this cancer was uh, radiation treatment. But it's not like these days when you can just go to your kind of local hospital and get radiation treatment. It, he had to fly out to California. So a um, couple of months, I guess, two or three months, roughly, that, that about right. Flew out to California with my mom um, and, uh, and battled this cancer. Um, and one of the things that uh, I remember him telling me, and uh, my mom has since told this story several times, but, is that every day one of his brothers would call him while he was out there getting the cancer treatment. So I share that with you just because it's important to remember the impact you can have on your, on your friendships and, and, the, and the people in your lives. And, and I can tell you that that's the kind of thing that you know, distracted him and kept him from thinking about the battle that he was facing um, on a daily basis. And um, I, just, I just think that's, I wanted to share that with you because I think back about, about Cliff and about how important this was to him. Um, I think he was actually president at the time and they had to kind of assign his presidency to somebody else. But to be able to hear every day from a different brother in the house and uh, kind of have that distraction and understand what's going on in the house was, was a really important, uh, important thing for him. Um, so when I read the, uh, the, the invitation to come and speak, I, the, the, the title I think is Better Men, what is it, Better, lives. better Men, Better Lives Lecture Series. So I'm going to lecture a little bit, all right? <laughs> uh, I know I'm not that much older. I'm, I am. I just turned 40, but, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to lecture a little bit. Um, uh, a few things. That's, I figured that was a theme, so I had to share kind of some, some uh, wisdom, if you want to call it that. Um, uh, a few thoughts that, that came to my mind when I was thinking about speaking to, with you all tonight. Um, one is... Uh, it's, it's, it's an earth-shattering earth thought, but it's the importance of relationships. And by that, no, I'm, that's not, I'm sure you've heard that a time or two, right? Um, but it's the importance of um, being true in relationships and focusing on those relationships in really intentional, thoughtful ways, in ways that men tend to not be willing to do. Like those calls, as an example, to my brother out in California, to a, a guy that's your age, fighting cancer and going through that and having the vulnerability to call him and talk him through that every day and and uh, and being willing to step up and kind of develop those type of relationships I think you'll find in your in your days as you move on uh, how important that is um, and that uh, it's it kind of get then gets into to me uh, what I wanted the why I wanted to share that part of it to, with you is you're gonna I'm sure here a time or two as well the importance of networking right so as you get into your professional careers and it's not just what you do, it's who you know, and all that, right? I'm sure you've heard that time and time again. Uh, certainly what I do in, in fundraising, network's a pretty, pretty important piece. Um, but, you know, in my mind, it's, it's, it's not just networking to shake a hand and share a business card and, um, and make a connection of some kind. It's about building true relationships that have meaning that will really, really drive things for you in the future. Um, uh, Bob Bodine uh, wrote a book, book, The Power of Who. I don't know if any of you have heard that book. Maybe some of the business students have. Um, Bob Bodine is, is somebody that's really big in our industry, in the, in the college athletics administration side. He, he hires a lot of coaches, and he does. he's one of those um, consultants that folks hire to hire coaches and ADs and, and those type of folks. So an amazing network in, of, of his own. But the premise of his book is, is that networking is extremely important. And the power of who in your life is an amazing influence on your, your success. But what the com a common mistake is, is that it's, it's not just making random connections with as many people as you can. It's that your life will lead you into the people and the places that you need to get to develop real meaningful relationships that will, that will bring that network for you long term. So, uh, as an example of that, it's not, you know, when, when, uh, when you're out there in, in the hiring process, you're trying to get a job with someone else. Um, so many times I've met somebody randomly and they think, well, you know, I know Laird and he'll, he worked here at this school and he can help me with this. Well, if I don't really know them, I'm not really going to be able to help them in the way that they want to be helped, right? It, but if, if somebody that really knows them calls me and that I trust and that I have a real relationship that uh, goes beyond just a, a few phone calls and a, and a business card here and there, 
um, those are the kind of things that really move you down the path. One that was was to the point where he was going to trust me to come in and be one of his sort of central right hand people within the department. Um, but I had a really close friendship with a gentleman that he was really close to and that was the thing that put us over the top because he knew about my history and he knew about my abilities and kind of what I'd done in the in the industry but until he had that that knowledge of having somebody that truly knew and that he could truly trust tell him about me, I would have never ended up being here where I am. You know, and all those kind of pathways kind of happen in your life. Um, and as you look back on it, I think you, you realize sort of the sort of the um, the way it all works out was sort of meant to be. Um, the, the third thing I'd say is uh, to be present. Um, and by that I mean that that when I was early on in my career. Uh, I had a, uh, a guy that I respected a great deal. I, you know, had the. I was just like, you know, every other young guy out there in the, in the, in the business world, if you will, and wanted to conquer the world and and move up the ladder and, and chain as fast as I could. And so I asked him, well, how? Do, what do I need to do? You know, I'm four or five months into my first job. What do I need to do to get to that next, <coughs> next thing? And he said, well, just do your job as good as you can do it and be good to people along the way. And I thought that was incredibly boring and, and terrible, terrible advice. But uh, looking back on it, I think it is very important that uh, one thing I see a lot in young people now, and I've, I've hired several, particularly in my old role with Learfield, um, is that folks, young folks tend to get in those positions and they're so worried about the next thing that they're not focused on where they're at. And if you, and you'll find if you just work hard, focus on what you're doing, you perform, then things will happen naturally. You always want to be then willing and ready to move. Because then the you know the the other thing that I saw was folks would be in a position and they weren't they didn't have the courage to take the jump to the next step or the next place or whatever it may be. But um, that thought of being present and being focused on where you're at, I think, is is really important. Um, and for me, all those kind of things are tied together by faith. And I don't know if you all are Christian men or not, but to me. When I think back on the importance of relationships and and how those those networks that I had with the people that I that I came across, um, how I was kind of led down a path, and I was always sort of introduced to the right people at the right time in my life. Um, to me, that was a it, it comes down to faith to be able to kind of tie all those things together.